let's start with a story that I suppose will continue to dominate the week ahead. Of course, those stage three tax cuts or lack thereof. Now, no matter which way Labor tries to spin it, the change of heart is a betrayal of an election promise. But they're desperate for voters to focus on the policy, not the broken promise. This package is aimed fairly and squarely at middle Australia. And when economic circumstances change, it would be irresponsible to not change economic policy. We've been upfront about that. You've said, my word is my bond, and now you have to say, oh, sorry, I didn't really mean that. This is about putting people before politics, and we've made the right decision for the right reasons. The other day, the Deputy Liberal Leader Susan Lay was emphatic that they would roll back any of Labor's changes, but today Lay was much more tempered in her response. We've got to go through the fine print on this, Andrew, because you can't trust anything this government says. But have they got you if you don't pass on the 16 bucks? Or is we'll, not to? We will look at whatever comes in front of us. Paul, I, I think this ultimately comes down to the, the politics of whether or not they can sell to what Labor would call the average voter, mm -hmm. that the $804 or whatever they're going to get is worth the broken promise. Does the broken promise actually hurt the government in any way? With the million people who were expecting more money, it's going to be more potent. That's important because um, this government doesn't have the same first-term backbench that Tony Abbott had or that John Howard had. They both had 90-plus seats in the parliament, mm. which meant the inevitable gravitational change that happens between election one, when you get the job, and the correction at two. Um, and some examples of that, forgive me reading here some of the notes that I made last week, in Higgins, uh, their electorate is 31% higher than the mean mm. income. Uh, they've got 27% professionals and 15% managers, big chunk of people who would be affected mm. by this. Uh, in Benelong, they're 17% higher. They've got 38% professionals, 15% managers. In Reed, it's 19% above the median I income at 34% and 36% of professionals and managers. And in Tangy in Western Australia, it's 31% professionals, 13% managers. So the reality is, is that the, the 4D chess of politics here is that the best case scenario Labor would be looking at here is to say, OK, if this is the issue that's going to break us up with people, where's it going to break us up? On the backbench, there are four MPs that would say, well, I'm kind of going to fall into this territory, right? So the assumption is that there might be something somewhere else that they pick up Otherwise, they're pretty confident about the idea that because of things like the Teals, the Libs would never get to a position where they'd be able to form a minority government. Mm. So we hope to hold on to the middle or maybe even win a seat like Lindsay in Western Sydney where the numbers are a little more favourable. So how important the promise is is obviously dependent on where you sit in all of this. However, 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 the Liberal Party has one option and one option only here, and it's to do exactly what Labor did on stage <laughs> three multiple times, which is we'll always vote for a tax cut. So, yes, we'll pass this through the Senate. We'll try to amend it in the lower house. So you've got the footage of all those Labor MPs and Teal MPs voting for bracket creep. You do exactly the same thing in the Senate. And then you come out of this saying you got your money. We'll go him on the broken promise and we promise to give the money to the people who had banked on the money coming. Yeah, well, I mean, you can't end up in a position where you are essentially looking, Caroline, like you're not supporting tax cuts. I mean, the, the tax cuts aren't what were promised, but they are still tax cuts to some degree, right? There's, there's some tax cuts, but they weren't the same tax cuts that were promised to a large proportion of Australians who then went and, in many cases, worked out their family budgets based on those promises that weren't just given once before the election. They were given again and again and again by Mr My Word Is My Bond, not so much anymore. <laughs> and that's the killer. Uh, that's the Anthony the killer. Albanese. Yeah. And, I mean, ultimately as well, it, it doesn't matter what happens and whether people, you know, happily take those tax cuts which they will, uh, it's the reputational damage. It's a Prime Minister who's lost complete trust. His word means nothing anymore. He's given a free pass to the opposition to go him in election ads as the liar that he's proved himself to be. And that's that's going to be an easy, easy win for them. It, it, I think this will mean that he will lose key seats because 
he's not trustworthy. Well, if you look at the um, the top 20 wealthiest electorates in the country now, the majority of them are held by either Labor or the Teals. But uh, this idea that what we're being told, it's a, it's a cost of living tax cut, Joe. You know, yep. voters and income earners on the lower end of the scale deserve a higher tax cut. This tax cut does not come until July 2025. There's no immediate relief for anyone in this, right? How can you actually sell this as, as about the cost of living? Correct. Uh, I think this is, well, it should be it should be coming, I thought of it coming in July 1 this year, um, uh, which will be able to address um, the, the cost of living. And that is very important for Labor because it can't say, trust me, we'll give you different tax cuts instead. This has to be tax cuts in people's pockets. So it's in people's pockets July 1 this year. And that is going to be the difference between spectacular failure and pulling a rabbit out of a hat uh, come the election at the end of this year or probably early next year. Um, the, um, the, the other saving grace, ironically, for uh, Anthony Albanese, will be that people hold politicians generally in such low regard in the first place. Right. And and I know... Oh, that's sad. No one, no one likes well, not broken... Not interrupt, but I have plenty to say no on one, that. No one likes broken <laughs> promises, <laughs> obviously. But, again, when I talk to people about it, say, oh, aren't you worried that the PM lies? lied? And they go, oh, they're all liars, mate. You can't, you know, so, all, so all people trust from politicians is what they've got in their hot little hand. They will have something in their hot little hand uh, before the next election, so they won't have to take um, anyone's word for it. So the lack of my word as my bond isn't a big problem. And again, the Libs will go to town attacking him and attacking him for being dishonest, but when push comes to shove, they'll say, right, well, you're backing it in, aren't you? Or are you saying that you're actually going to reach in and take away that money that people are already getting and giving it to someone on an income of 200 grand a year? So that is the... That, so it's ugly and it's brutal, but that is the position, the, the sort of knock-down, drag-out position that Labor has set itself up for. And I've got to say, I, I would rather they had not done this, but having done it, it's... It looks like a pretty good, pretty good election-winning fight. But why not, Evelyn? <laughs> Given that they've got a, a large surplus sitting there, uh, mind you, thanks to uh, resources, which the government doesn't want to talk so much about, they've got a large surplus there. Why could they not have just delivered the Stage 3 tax cuts in full and given an extra sweetener to income earners on the lower end of the scale? I mean, wouldn't that have made everyone happy? You'd think so, and you'd think that they'd want to please a voter base, considering that they have lost so much trust with the public. I mean, they lost it during The Voice, they spent half a billion dollars on something that failed, um, and the government just keeps... The Labor are committing self-harm at this point in time. Um, so you'd think that they'd do anything to redeem their image. I mean, Joe, you said all politicians lies. I actually totally agree with that. However, that being said, some are bigger liars than others, and it seems that there are some politicians who promise a lot more and don't deliver than others. But I think the important thing out of this is the government doesn't make money, it takes money. And if the government didn't waste as much money as they were, they wouldn't need to take so much from the people. Correct. And so I think we need to start asking, what is the government doing with the money? Why is it being wasted? Why are they having to take from us? Because... In my opinion, modern taxation is almost theft. They rob us 40% of the... All taxation is theft, if yeah. you ask me. 40% of the year we work to put money in the government's pocket. That's the reality of it. And at the moment, 60% of an income is not enough to keep a family afloat. Um, and so whatever government, whatever politician is going to promise something, follow through with it and make the cost of living for everyday Australians bearable and doable, um, that's who's going to win. And that's what they should be focusing on. And if you look at the, the income tax receipts for the federal government, I mean, in October 2019, it was something like $56 billion they were generating out of income tax. Now, or October 2023, it was 91. And that's, that is the result of bracket creep. Yep. You know, people naturally have wages going up. The government makes more and more money. Then they go, oh, well, here's a little bit of a tax cut. We go, yippee, but they're already getting more money out of us. Going back to the broken promises you wanted to well, my, my simple point was this, right? Is, is that you know, after the 2019 election, one of the you know, both after every election, political parties they do reviews. They turn around, and look back. How could we have won? Where did we lose? What do we have to do next time? 2019's Labor Party election uh, review, apart from other things, basically sort of concluded, hey, this sort of daggy day connection that Morrison has to the to the electorate, we need to break this down. We need to frankly turn him into yet another politician. Mm -hmm. The problem for any Prime Minister is that once you become as bad as everyone else, there's nothing special about your Prime Ministership. So for Albo, he's got to hope here that people have short memories, but at the end of a term, 
are you looking at a bloke who has given you, oh, 14 bucks a week, thanks very much. <laughs> um, or are you looking at a bloke whose judgment was $450 million on a referendum that didn't work. Yeah. Mm. The bloke yeah. who promised you Bingo. 275 on your power bills, yeah. but it's not going to turn up. The bloke who said that, uh, you know, if you got a pay rise and moved into one of these high things, you'd be sweet. That's why, interesting, it's always, I just, I'm always fascinated as much about how these people play the game mm. as the game itself. And you're noticing the Liberals starting to lock around this liar in the lodge mm. line, yeah. mm. that's devastating. The other, because, you could, because as soon as you're arguing the grey in politics, you lose. Yeah. If they can keep yeah. it to the black and white of he makes bad decisions and he doesn't tell the truth, then that's what moves elections.